recording in progress. <laughs> Okay, good evening, everyone. So today I had some computer issues. Um, we continue our discussion on descriptive statistics. And today also we give a shot to Tableau just for knowing how it works. Uh, let me upload another document for uh, in-class activities for Tableau. So let me just add that one in class. So we have some assignments coming up. So one, I uh, post of them I uh, post today. For one, you almost have five days. For the other one, which is uh, for, for understanding of Tableau. And so after you get familiar with the Tableau, you, you will be able to do the fourth homework. Also keep in mind, September 23rd is your first uh, project deliverable, which include problem statement, multi your motivation, and uh, you should talk about the data, like the data columns, uh, which kind of uh, basically why you pick a, a piece of the data and uh, what you're going to achieve by the end of the project. So you should include your data source and some basic description of the data. So. Uh, by the end of the this month, I mean, I mean the September, uh, you should be able to do some descriptive statistics. So by learning through Tableau, you would be able to have your first project delivered. Any question about uh, uh, your assignments, project, or other questions from previous class? Okay, so I think it's not relevant. Okay, so last week uh, we have an intro of the course. We had, uh, like, for example, uh, what, what are the subject, which uh, platforms you might use to learn. Uh, also, we talk about effective visualizations and having saying that. You need to be have some interaction with people, and uh, but technology definitely helps. And we get a sort of Tableau, just installation, and I talk I talk about some product key that you can use for having Tableau. Okay, this week uh, we have uh, uh, we go over some general introduction of visualizations, also. We have some basic experiment using Tableau and we go over some visualization as uh, for practicing. Okay, so in the last class, uh, you have some reading assignments. So can you want for application case 1.2, either from people over Zoom or here? Could you answer this question? is about Silvari's increased business with visual analytics and real-time reporting capabilities. What, kind, uh, what was the challenges faced by Silvari? If you answer today, I give you a bonus. This is your next assignment, actually. Uh, so what I mean from third assignment, is just answering the questions that you see in this PowerPoint, okay. <laughs> Uh, at this time, I don't provide comments because uh, it's your friend's assignment, but you definitely get bonus. So what was the second question? How did Silvery solve this problem using data visualization with Tableau? Mm 
Okay. Uh, is there anyone from Zoom wants to answer? Uh, can I answer the question? Yes, go ahead. Uh, do you mind the visualization uh, specifically and uh, descriptive and uh, visualization can give us a statistical perspective and we can find the uh, product where and when it can be sold in the, the proportional product which can be sold perfectly and uh, due to the visualization policy we can identify other policies for marketing and uh, more specific or uh, target customers. Okay, cool. Next application, okay, 1.3. is about Siemens reduced cost with the use of data visualization. What challenges were faced by Siemens Visual Analytics Group? Is there any volunteer for uh, first and second question? Second question, how did the data visualization tool uh, done this BI help Siemens in reducing cost? Yes? Yes. So, uh, the second question, the data management issue, it has to be able to have some cost. Mm -hmm. Cool. What about your answer? Yeah. So, the silver is answered with Siemens problem by the previous question. Okay. Are oh, you attacking Siemens or Silvers? Okay. Just go ahead, yeah. Yeah, go ahead. So you three, including one of your friend over Zoom, you don't have to stop the next assignment. I give you full credit. So you, uh, for yeah, you you are you already got full credit for the third assignment. But I mean, the, so the remaining of you, including all people over Zoom, excluding the, excluding the one who answered the second question, you don't have to submit uh, the third assignment. You already get uh, full credit. So. After your friend, uh, everybody submit the assignment, I go back and just make a little discussion about them. Okay, let's talk about the art, uh, art of analytics. Uh, by that, it was like kind of conference uh, or meeting uh, of 20 amazing ethics insights. So they use some kind of artistic view over the data try to visualize the data using some intrinsics. So actually, um, look over the, those kind of data, it's kind of galaxy type, uh, kind of visualization and, or this one, let me go to the next. For example, this one is about a, a calling center and basically is just showing the connections between different entities. So basically each dot is a phone number, line is a call between these two phone numbers. As you see, for some, um, not, some numbers called a lot, they are either related to business or maybe just those annoying numbers that reach so many people. 
Um, it might be helpful for first to the artistics and just catching eyes. And maybe for this case, you can find you could be suspicious to some phone numbers and just pick who's is either a legitimate number who's reaching people or either just those ads or like people. Uh, some cases could be crimes, but they just, I mean, I'm not sure how long you have been in the US. Sometimes people call you, ask for your social number, credit number, don't give it to them. So they want to rip you off. So even if they call you from, let's say, court or sometimes police may call you, but they should give you the exact address that you should go and talk with them. So even if police calls you, they don't give you any information over phone, you should go in person. Or for odd, odd, so many legal things, they send you a letter. So don't provide any le legal or uh, basically financial information over phone. Anyway, so, or this one is about some tweet storm. So there is some uh, sources of tweets. People uh, might mention them a lot here. Uh, each dot uh, refer to a Twitter ID and uh, lines refer to retweets. Like it could be some sports events or like um, some political uh, tweets. For example, Trump used to be very active in Twitter. So whenever he makes, he made some tweets, he was retweeted a lot. So it could be referred to those kind of uh, situations. Or well, this one is just money flow between companies. Dot is a company and line just uh, money transfer. So let's have a discussion. These kind of figures, what do you think the other pros and cons? Can anyone say some pros and cons of these kind of figures? In general, not any specific of them, but and the exact people's attention, but it's always difficult to understand, not easy to interpret by a common man. Any other feedbacks? It opens a lot of things because I'm busy with my community and the person next to me, they also see something different. They don't see you know, everything about us. Also, it's always nervous if you have a Yeah, I think all of you are right. So you're talking about some information issues. So in terms of transferring information, doesn't seem to very practical. It might cause some misunderstanding or even difficult to sometimes difficult to understand. Other one, yeah, if catching eyes could be artistic, just show how technical, how artistic you are. But at the same time, takes a lot of time and effort. So if you get hired in a company, uh, they just uh, hire people who could uh, make informative decisions, make uh, re uh, informative reports quickly. So for daily work in a company, like such a figures are not just useful. So they don't hire you to be, they, don't, they won't hire you as an artist. It's better, it's good to have some art, some capabilities in terms of creating, to be a little artistic, but not too much, it's too, uh, too much here. So I just figured out, I forgot my mask and due to university issues illegal, so, or not illegal, it's, it's bad. So let me just grab, uh, go and grab my mask and come back quickly. I'm sorry, sorry guys. I just saw your face. I was thinking something like wrong with you today. Thank you. 
Also, if you see me outside, you can figure out who I am. So, because you saw me with a mask today. <laughs> oh, anyway. So, yeah. Uh, it's good to have these capabilities, but it's just good to have. No, it's not necessary. Or some cases, if your company says you spend too much of time to create this, they would be mad at you because you should be productive and pro and you know, at the end of the day, even making figures, Tableau, like Excel, Power BI, is not the big thing. The big thing is how to you can make decision, how to provide your insight. Your insights is much more valuable than the uh, technology that you know. So I'm not sure if we have those uh, like analytics competitions at Collect this year. Most likely we have. So usually uh, people who can't talk about their project, people who can't make connection with the audiences win the competition. Even last year, nobody, I think the, first, the winner was not even from business analytics major. So he didn't have business analytics tool set, but he was so good in presenting and communicating with the people who are much older than him and are from different majors, he could win a, a, a business and analytics competition. And this one is about if, uh, some information about whiskey brands. This one made by a student in Oklahoma State. Now he's a professor. So it's about different diseases in the human bodies. So on, okay. So, yeah, sure. Which one, this one? I mean, all the, the visual. No, they don't prefer. I mean, if you know them, if you can make one, uh, it just means you are very good in uh, some, uh, there is some script languages for making something similar to this. Not this much artistic for sure. This much artistic is just need different tool set. So if you can make one, it just means you have, you are very good in technical aspects, but they don't ask you to just do it every day, maybe once in the whole year. So it's not, it just means it's not very important to make to be able either to make one or not be able to make one. So as I said, the use of visual representation is to explore, make sense of, and communicate data. So for exploring, making sense, and communicating data, you don't have to make, to be too much artistic. Basically, at the end, you should uh, be able to provide information. 
again let me read an information is aggregation summarization and contextualization of data so it's the goal so if you know power bi and uh, tableau is a plus but it's not the main thing so even for your final project i don't want to see you just put so much of visualization and never be able to talk about them so that's really bad So otherwise, people can hire robots and just throw that and see some cool visualization. That's it. So it's, it's not the reason people hire you. So they want you guys to provide information from for them. So data visualization is not something new. It's I think if, if you look at some artistic, some historic sites, it might be even like more than five thousand years ago. People start to do some visualization. So. That's some uh, ancient pots that they provide some information about agriculture and some animals. Then, uh, I mean, in the near centuries, they try to put more informative or more quantitative data on their visualizations. And uh, recently, it's even it's a kind of you can consider as a discipline. Uh, So even here, you see 1801, if you use some uh, uh, basically uh, visualization to talk about quantities, is about export and import of Denmark and Norway. So even at that here, as you see, we have more quantitative data visualizations. Mm. So again, this is this figure just shows you the nature of the data. It could come from sensors, social media, some uh, business data set, including SQL access. Then, uh, as a, especially if you're from business analytics major, so you should be able to have some tools, uh, some skills to get those all of those data as we talked. In the last class, it might take like 80% of your time. You just try to catch all the data and uh, prepare them for processes. In the second stage, uh, which might take 20% uh, of your time, you should do some visualization, some analytics, predictive analytics, prescriptive, descriptive, and uh, make sense of the data and do data exploration. The last part, which is presentation, you should be you should understand the data and the basically uh, the analytics that you use uh, very well, and should be able to make some information. Those aggregation and summarization of the data, and maybe if it's about analytics, you predict. If so, if it's about predictive analytics, you should predict something in future. Is if it's prescriptive analytics. You should prescribe a specific way of doing something. So these are all challenges that might uh, just uh, get, might cost you a lot of time. As I said, this could be related, cost up to 80% of your whole of your project. Because uh, first of all, first part is just getting the data. If, you might have some data source reliability, content, accessibility, some consistency issue, granularity means uh, either it could be ge geographical granularity or time granularity, and even validating of the data. There's a certain projects, we can just look at the quality of the data. You might remember the, during previous president, there was so much of talk about uh, fake media or fake news. So even people use analytics to just analyze if the data that they get, is it fake or related to a genuine uh, news? Okay, these are the general types of the data that you might encounter. So is either a structured or unstructured. A structured means just a SQL based data that you might see. Data is all in the uh, columns and rows, and you have tables that are connected to each other. Unstructured just means any general type of data. It could be textual, 
uh, multimedia, even JSON file, all of them are uh, unstructured. So in this course, we just we cover some part of we do we would have some textual data analytics and also for uh, definitely we go over some uh, searchable uh, data either for predictive and prescriptive. Can I talk about them? So we get to the point that you should always keep in mind in this course, you learn so much of uh, visualizations, how to make so many different types of figures. But you're, there's a, also there's always an important question uh, uh, which chart or graph should you use? There is no clear answer. You just should use the ones that you can and make better decision. So, you, I mean, for, I, what I mean, let's say you learn how to make 20 different types of figures. You shouldn't put, just drop all of them in your project. And uh, also, I remember most of your friends' issues that, I mean, I got in their projects, which, be, uh, I, again, I told you to submit your projects sooner so I can provide some feedbacks. For example, last two years, I've seen people just, um, uh, drop so many figures in the project without even explanation. So it's like a robot just submitted something. And so what I mean, you might submit five figures, but you should be able to explain what do they mean? What can you understand from them? And uh, those kind of things. So don't just uh, drag and drop some figures from your software and think is a good thing. Okay. So let's look at the cool dashboard. So it's from uh, uh, Gap, um, basically gapminder.org is a very famous uh, data. I mean, sorry, a company who provides so cool visualizations. Okay, so you learn to do so actually something similar at the end of this course, but definitely for this level of visualization, you need to spend more than what you learn in this class. So, so on the uh, y-axis, we have life expectancy. On x, we have um, income. So from this figure, what can you understand so far? What general think? Your income. I mean, the higher... Yeah, higher income. Yeah, higher more. Income, so yellow refers to Eurasia. So I mean, Europe and some of Russia. Yeah, and it's for whole history. So. Let me just play here. It's from 1805. So maybe recent year is different, but it's just average of whole last 200 years. So do you want to say something? No, I'm just saying like, you know, you can see the gap between like the income, unlike the, the uh, Europe and Africa, or like uh, the Americas. Yeah. Like, you know, Yeah, it's very good. Actually, it's much more important to be able to make these figures. So with these figures, if you make this dashboard, it means you are good for entry-level business analytics jobs. But uh, if you can explain that these figures, it just means you are, it means you are in better levels, higher level. So let's just play it and see what, uh, what can you see from here. So it seems by 1905, European countries just 
have a good improvement, so they jump so much. But Asian countries are still just not that much of progress. So let me just go back a little bit. This is China, right? So let me, I'm asking from your Chinese friends. So let me just make uh, China and India because we have so many Indian Chinese students here. So India. Let me go back a little bit, maybe here. So, have you seen what happened to China? It seems near 1960s, there is a sudden drop in life expectancy. Is there anyone from China who knows history what happened near 1960s? Oh, maybe that's so suddenly China went down and then jumped back. Oh. But look, China and India is catching up. So 2018, they are very almost in the same level of European countries. So, yeah, so again, let's. So the, the blue dots are India, China. You, I think you guys are one third of the whole world, right? Or even more than one third. Yeah. India and China, I think is like about one third of the whole plan. So the big dots are referred to these two countries. So I think something happened in 1870 something because both countries went down. So it might be a big war at that here, I'm not sure. So, so by the way, I mean, the life expectancy for like India and China is like 20, 30 years. It doesn't mean everybody, nobody lives more than, maybe somebody lives more than 100 years, but it just means it could be some war or some diseases. So maybe infants who just one year old dies. So the average of one year, let's say two infants with the one year, and one who could live 100 years. One plus one plus 100 is 102 divided to three, it will be 34. So although the average is 34, it doesn't mean nobody lived more than 30 something. It just means the average was suddenly down, maybe because it was a disease, so, so many babies died. So the average suddenly went down. 1970s, so as you see, Almost all the world went down. So is there anyone he here who knows what world happened? World, 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 yeah, world, world war one, yeah. So almost so many people died. So as you see, this is actually a good figure. There's a lot of technical uh, things included. It means everybody who did this figure who was very good in technical matters. Also, is very able to communicate and you can talk about the information very well. Versus this figure, maybe they are much harder to make, but much harder to talk about and to, uh, just make information. But very artistic. So, have you been on Tableau? Pardon me. Have you been on These figures? Yeah. No. Uh, there is some good packages, for example, um, I forgot the names, but there is some Java-based uh, scripts, JavaScript-based uh, languages that you can make this. But again, maybe just good for a competition or something, not just for day-to-day -day work. So it just wastes a lot of time and effort for just a little gain. So these are the major uh, data visualization and visual analytics softwares. As you see, the best one is Tableau and Power BI in terms of uh, the leader softwares. 
are in here. So we cover these uh, two. I don't say they're a bad thing, but they're the most common ones who, if you look at the some job posting, many people looking for people who know something in uh, Power BI and I mean, Microsoft Power BI and also Tableau. And we covered a lot, a, a major parts of Tableau and Microsoft Power BI. But uh, what I recommend, especially if you're in the job market for the either internship or a full-time job, get some certification. Later, I provide some major certification programs that you can join. Also, if it, uh, the budget matters and, uh, and time matters, you can uh, look for some LinkedIn-based uh, courses. They are free for you. So with your Clark email, you can register for them. I get certification, I get them posted over your LinkedIn profile. So if there is some software with looking people, they can just easily catch you. So getting certification is good. Doesn't mean you're professional. It, having certificate just means you, have, you know at, you, at least you know basics. So that's really good to get some certifications. Uh, later, I provide you some uh, major certification, but if you go to LinkedIn, LinkedIn Learning, where's that? LinkedIn Learning. I look at some of them like, Power BI essential training or something like that. I haven't finished it, but if I spend like two hours on something, usually takes more, but as you see, at least you get something, a badge on your LinkedIn profile. That's good. That just shows you know basic. So if you're looking for internship or full-time job, I recommend to have like both certificates. Again, as I said, I provide you a more uh, sophisticated uh, certificate information later, but uh, LinkedIn is free and uh, much easier to uh, finish. Any questions so far? And as I said, if you know some other visualizations, especially the niche players, so uh, I don't say they are bad things, but they are not that much common. So, or some vision is like SaaS, other tools. They are IBM tools. All of them are good things. I don't say they are bad things, but uh, for, usually for the, I mean, most of the companies right now, they are either on Tableau side or Power BI. So if you know JavaScript, you probably make, you can make some more sophisticated one. Even they are very, uh, advanced Python packages that you can uh, implement and make uh, this, something similar to these figures. But again, as I said, um, knowing Python and R or those script languages like JavaScript are all good, but rarely you need too much in your, uh, when you get a job. Usually they want uh, fast and informative figures right away. So even if you know JavaScript, Python, R, it's much easier, more uh, efficient to use these tools and make some figures that you can, you can help, that helps your company to make informative decisions. Any questions so far? Let me wait one or two minutes for your friend over Zoom. So, because I don't see their faces, see if they, People over Zoom, if you have questions, you can either use your mic or type in the chat room so I can see them. I don't see any questions. So...
Let me read this one completely without a story telling data of a just a rear view mirror. So you should be able to use your techniques. I mean, those like uh, tools that you have to make, be able to make your story. So it's, the story could be the previous events and what you can see in future. Is there anyone who knows Mr. Branson, Sir Branson? He's a famous international entrepreneur. He's from England. So just read what he said here. Complexity is your enemy. Any fool can make something complicated. It is hard to make something simple. If I explain anyway, he meant don't throw so much of information in the tools, make some complicated figures. You should be, be enough smart to make something simple that provides a lot of information and makes, helps people to make decisions. So I used to, uh, I mean, I, I know in, uh, in some multi-billion com uh, companies, even like Apple or like, Chevron, those big companies, I mean, the CEO should know all the major projects, but if he, if he, if he's, he's or her employee just, just provides so much of complicated figures and tables, they cannot finish reading them. They should 24 seven just read those tables. So they should make uh, multi-billionaire, multi-billion decisions by looking at the, uh, very fast. So they need something sim simple, but enough informative. I'm not sure, but I think I heard a story about Apple CEO, Tim Cook. He, he fired some guys because they were not able to make some, something, some good uh, report, simple informative reports. Because those guys, they don't want to spend too much time to figure out what is going on there and think what you did. And, they hire people to make their life simpler, not complicated. Okay, so for today, we we'll start giving a shot to Tableau, just playing with some figures. And from the next class, we have more hands-on experiences. So for today, I don't want you guys to freak out from Tableau, just see it's even much easier than Excel. So, Open your tableau. Let me just exit my previous one. No. I'm using the latest tableau version, but if you have the previous one, that should be okay too. Also, on model, where is model? So I put the in class .pdf. You can open alongside because it's your first time working with Tableau. And no worries if you forget some steps. So I put all this, all the figures there. So um, Oh, I forgot to upload the data set. Let me just <laughs> upload the data set too. So, if, for me, did. Okay, uh, download in class and the data set that I'm going to upload today. So, today my computer has a lot of issues. It's the reason I'm uploading too late. But Okay, download the sample source subset that Excel SX. Also in class the PDF. Is there anyone has issues in uh, for providing the product key for Tableau? So as I said, go to Tableau installation and uh, key. So when you click on it, download and install the latest version. This is your activation key. Don't share it outside your class. Otherwise, some of your friends cannot install Tableau because it has limited uh, installation copy. So go to help. 
manage product key here activate and just with the product you just paste your code here and activate your copy okay so first i'm going to bring that excel file into tableau go to microsoft excel browse and just bring the excel file that you have i already uploaded it might take a little bit Let me wait one minute for everyone who can be able to get to this point. So go to your model, download a PDF and Excel file, open Tableau, and just bring the Excel file into the Tableau. Can you use the Tableau mobile? Tableau mobile? I haven't worked with that, but it should be fine. I think you have tablets, right? Okay. I'm trying, let's see. Yeah, so you have a tablet, for, uh, sorry, you have a uh, laptop, why you didn't install it? Is not? I think there is a, if you look at the clerk website, you can find how to connect your laptop. So anyway, so we have three tables. We work with the order table. So as you see, it has row ID, product order priority, discount, unit price. So these are some uh, multiple rows. So each row related to a part of the order. So for some orders, you have multiple lines. It just means somebody ordered multiple things. So you might have different you might have same order ID for different lines. So let me just drag and drop returns here. Yeah. So it's just, you know, it won't ulti uh, automatically connect these two tables through order ID. So it's for the people who had a skill server you know, you remember we have two tables, you have a unit ID, you try to uh, connect them. And we have different types of connection, like many to many, one to many, those kind of things. Is it exactly the same thing? But uh, it's not the goal of this course. So we, are, we don't work uh, with the SQL-based logic because more specifically, uh, this course is very general one. So we, we have so, uh, so many other students from different majors, but Yeah, sure. And just ex uh, explain something extra because it's not useful for everyone. So for your project, if you have multiple tables that you want to connect, you just, uh, when you open your Excel file, you can drag and drop, just connect those tables together and work with the whole data set. But it's not the goal for today, so I'll just delete them. of this one. Okay, which step you are, Be even before this? Okay, let me close Tableau again. So have you downloaded the Excel file? Yeah. Okay. So you need to bring the Excel file into Tableau. You just go here. Microsoft Excel or go to file and open. Both of them are the same. Similar to other program, if you work with Excel, it's exactly the same. I click on Microsoft Excel, browse to my file, click, and just brings it to here. Okay. 
So now we have three tables, as I said, for people who work with the SQL Server, you can just uh, work with the multiple tables, but for this class, our focus are not on SQL Server. So just select orders, drag and drop it here. Uh -huh. So open the PDF file. So look at the first figure. In the first figure on the columns, I have product category. So furniture, office supplies, and technology. So, and I have some of the sales. So my goal, I want to see my sales in different categories. So for this purpose, oh, where is that? Do you see if I hover my mouse here? Sheet one. If next to sheet one, there's a if a, look, it's just a new worksheet. If you click, you say new worksheet. But I go to sheet one. So on the left side, I have two sections, measure names measure values. So measure name means categorical uh, variables or categorical columns of my first table in the data set. I know it's a weird name. So instead of saying categorical value, it just said uh, uh, measure names. Also, I have measure value. It just means numerical column. So again, in data source, some of your data is categorical numerical. Instead of that, when I go to sheet one, I have measure values and measure names. So it's just nothing, just saying some values are categorical, some of them are numerical. Okay, for first figure, uh, for columns, I have product category. For rows, I have sales. So, so category, product category, is it numerical value or categorical value? So it's obvious right? the name even is category. So for that category, you drag and drop columns. Sales, drag and drop on rows. It's, as you see, it's already calculated the sum. If you are not so, if you are not happy with that, take your mouse in the, this green part. Do you see a small triangle here? Just click. If you go to measure, you can change to median, average, count, anything. So let's say I'm looking at average. Again, let me do it again. So I know say is a number of sales, is the amount. So it should be numerical. So from sales, I drag and drop up to here. Again, today is not for teaching Tableau, just having some sense of Tableau, so no worries. And again, I post the video, so later you can see what I did. But as you see, Tableau has a smart intelligence, so it just assume most likely I'm looking at the sum of the sales. So it's the reason for the sales, although I don't have the summation, it automatically calculates the sum. So based on this figure, uh, oh, basically what does this figure tell you? Is, can anyone look at this table and tell me Let's say you don't know anything about Tableau. Yeah. Yeah, it seems we are very, our performance technology, sorry, in, yeah, in technology is more than furniture. We sell more in technology side. So let me change it to average. So I click on this triangle, then go to measure. Average. So as you see, although the overall sales in furniture is less than technology, but the average is more. What does it mean? Maybe you you sell. Okay, tell. And it makes sense. Yeah. 
An average of say. Let's say usually furniture are expensive. So like in this class, tables with like furniture and the chair is the furniture. And this mouse is a technology, but my cell phone is a technology. So maybe cell phone is very expensive, but the mouse is cheap. So the average is less than furniture, but probably we sell more technology than um, furniture. So again, the, just the goal is to be able to look at the figures and be able to provide some information. As you see, it's much easier. I'm not sure how many of you already worked with uh, such a thing, similar thing in Tableau, sorry, in Python R. If you want to make this figure in, tab, in Python R, it might take like 30 minutes here, drag the drop, that's it. So, so it's not a scaly. This is, you just load the file, drag and drop, and many times you don't even have to think about the function. So, Tableau guess, maybe you are looking at some, just calculate for some. Let's look at the next figure. Yeah? It has, you can mix even some dashboard. Do you remember we had a dashboard of like different countries during the years? You can make everything from a static figure up to dashboards. So uh, it looks silly and easy, but you can make some advanced things. So your friends talk about counts. Uh, so let's counting uh, orders in different regions. So for that, I go to sheet two or make a new sheet. Let me see, region. So region is a categorical variable I put in column. And for counting, maybe I can look at the order ID. So how many orders I have in different regions. So I drag and drop order IDs on rows, but, or anything that could be unique. So, but as you see, I don't want to look at the orders each. Do you see, I have order numbers here. So maybe instead of that, I take my mouse over order ID, you see the triangle, click on it, measure, count. And let's count the distinct because some orders might have multiple rows, just means somebody bought so many other things. So, uh, tab is a smart, but not too much smart. So it didn't, it didn't guess that when I drag and drop order, I'm, I want to count order, just put all the orders in the rows. So, Again here, it seems I have more distinct orders in central region than east, no, sorry, than west. If I'm not blind, west and east are kind of close to each other, but the least number of orders comes from south. So maybe if you're in the marketing department and look at these figures, it means you're uh, underperforming in the south. Uh, if there is no other reason, maybe you need to do some advertisement in the South to uh, like just boost your orders. Again, no worries. I mean, we, we talk about details of everything. What does everything mean? Today, I just want to show you how cool is Tableau. So we go to teaching in the next class. So look at these figures. For the rows, I have measure names. And I have measure values in the marks. So what? The, so we have rows and columns. Marks just means everything in the center. So rows, columns, and marks means every marks in the whatever you see in the center. So let's say. So I make a new worksheet by clicking on this icon, new worksheet. So measure names, measure names. I think it was in the columns. No, rows.
measure values in the max. But, you know, I just have a list of different measure values in the center. So I need to see numbers. I don't want to just see such a thing. So take your mouse in the marks. Do you see a dots? Just click and change it to text. Again, we have, I know this is kind of complicated figure. We talk later about it, but I just want to show you, we have rows, columns, and everything in the center, you played with the marks. So first it was something like this. It's the default one, but I took my mouse over these dots, click on it and change it to text. So I'm seeing see the textual uh, version of my dad. Yeah. So first, okay, let me just delete everything. Measure names on rows, measure values in the marks. And I want to uh, change it instead of details, change it to text. Now look at the measure values here. For the discount, it uh, calculates sum. Oh. Sum of all the discounts. For orders, is C and T means count. For product, uh, let me just, margin, you have sum. So if you are not happy, let's say, Instead of sum, you go to average. Average is almost near zero, so you see zero. Maybe it's not a good thing. So let me change it to median. Median is zero too. So yeah. I think for this one, let's just be some. But I think you got how to play with that. Yeah, maybe there's not that one. Yeah. Maybe you just have two two discounts. Just two. Maybe I'm not sure. I haven't looked at the data, but it just means very centered <laughs> around zero. Yeah, it means there is almost no discount. Maybe just one. Okay, so let's to look at this one. As you see now, um, for columns, I'm looking at the product container and also uh, measure names. For the rows, I have measure values. So next one, product container. Measure name. I have so many information for some though. I just want to keep profit and save. So let me just delete. For deleting, just select and press delete or take your mouse here. And I think it should be something, yeah, remove. Hmm? I put in the rows. So I took measure values and dro drop it here. So you then you see so many of them there. Okay, so let me just do this one.
if I want to change the uh, color colors on the center, so I should have something the marks. So as I said, if whatever you have in the mark is for just changing something in the center, let me just drag and drop uh, project uh, measure names. Then look at what I do over dots. So I click on the dot and change it to color. Now you have two different colors. So again, it was nothing here. It was everything was kind of bluish. So if I want to play with the center, I should do add something in the marks. What I did, I went to uh, measure names and drag it here and change, I mean, dots to color. So for profit and sale, I have different colors. Again, no worries. I mean, today I want you guys to get a feeling of Tableau. So I explain everything later. Just keep in mind, we have rows, we have columns, we have marks. And um, you can play with different functions if you count, sum, median, mean, those kind of things. I think we are getting to finishing the time. So So look over this figure for the columns. Now we did different things. So for the columns, we have a numerical value, which is sum, sum of the sales. For the rows, I have two different uh, categorical values. First category, second subcategory. So it's the reason for the rows, first you see categories, the larger one, or major group, then subgroup is or subcategories. So you might ask a question when we put numerical in the rows and columns, it just, there is no biblical rule. Just see what your user used to. So if they used to numerical values in the columns, put in the columns, otherwise put in the rows. So I think they're pretty much similar. So, but let me talk about the year. I want to look at uh, my sales in different uh, parts of the year. So what I do, so I put the dates on the columns and sales in the row. So order, result the date. So, as you see, uh, I have annual sales, but maybe I want to look at quarters. So I click on this plus sign here. Now I get into quarters. Again, next to the quarter, is, there's a plus sign. Click on it. So you get into each month. If you are not happy with the quarters, you can just select on it, go to, take your mouse over this triangle and remove it. So in each year, you see some of the sales. So is there anyone who can tell me why I have too much, a lot of, I mean, a big jump in the last months of the year? Because of uh, uh, the, uh, Christmas. Yeah, Christmas, to buy a lot of things. So, uh, maybe you can see that uh, there's a jump. So maybe you're, you should take care of inventory. Let's just put on. So it seems we have same trend in each year. So let me just focus on the month. Uh, maybe in December, it's just a decrease in the sale because maybe people are planning to travel. But before travel, we have. Uh, big amount of sale, although in the December also we have a lot of sale, but what, why in the November there's a huge jump? If it's your second year in the US, you should know about Black Friday. Yeah, there's a lot. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah might be, yeah, temp, uh, product type works. So let's just drag and drop product type or category. So let's look at technology. It seems we have a lot in the November and December, maybe because of Black Friday. But technology sales are very low in the maybe January and February. In January and February, we have a lot of sale in the still furniture is the most. Yeah, in the January, February, French is the most sale. I'm not sure why, but uh, in the November and December, you sell most of, even for October, most of sales in the technology. So let's say you want to do, uh, you, have a, uh, you work with Amazon. So you, you can, based on these figures, you can make a plan maybe for the last quarter of the year. You suck so much of technology thing because people buy a lot of technology. But maybe for January, February, and March, you start to, I mean, think of getting rid of technology people because furniture you sell a lot. So these are you make some, uh, you know, at the end knowing tablets as this is not too difficult. You just drag and drop, and but you look at the figures and you can make some decisions and provide some information. Okay, that's for today. I think I add more figures. You can just play with them. Um, I think we ran out of time. Maybe in the next class, I showed two more figures. But again, I think you can easily build them up, especially for this one. The last figure, we don't have any rows and columns. You just play with the center. So as you see, all the informations are in the marks because instead of row and columns, everything in the center. So next class, I play with one or two. But again, the purpose of today is just having a sense of Tableau, not that much of learning. Hopefully from next class, we have more hands-on experiences. So Tableau would be super easy for you guys. Any questions for today? Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to upload them tonight, but the, I mean, four of you don't need to submit uh, assignment three. So I don't see any questions from you guys and also from Zoom, so. Uh, no, thank that, you. Okay, thank you. Take care, bye. Take care, bye.